Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I recently made a video of my top 10 selection of what I consider to be some of the greatest street pictures of all time. As I hoped this encouraged quite a lot of feedback in the comments about my choices and why I had decided on them. Well as I pointed out in the video they were all images that I considered to be fine examples of the genre and also ones that had had a major influence on me for one reason or another. They also highlighted some of the many different forms of street photography that have been covered over the years. With the exception of one of the images, they all came from the 20th century and mostly from the 1950s, 60s and 70s. It was a genre defining era and the development of cameras and film stock, including that of serious colour film, great leaps were made by the master photographers of the time. Cartier-Bresson, Saul Leiter, Ernst Haas et al. all left a lasting legacy to the street photographers that are working today. Their influence knows no bounds. In this video I'm going to select 10 more pictures that I consider to be some of the finest examples of street photography made this century by photographers that are working today. 10 pictures that have influenced my photography through either their composition, their technique, their style, their subject matter and many more things. So this time there are no Saul Leiters, no Cartier-Bressons, no William Kleins, but instead there are 10 pictures by some fantastic photographers that I think show us that street photography in the 21st century is very much alive and well. When deciding on what pictures to include, I mainly looked at photographers who have a proven street photography track record. A lot of photographers have one or two great shots in their portfolio, but can they do it consistently? I'm not putting these pictures in any particular order, but I thought it'd be interesting to select them based on a category I feel they best represent. So there are pictures here based on their drama, their graphic appeal, their framing and so on. Let's take a look. Stuart Payton is a Scottish born photographer living and working in Milan. And this next picture is a beautiful example of colour, light, geometry and reflections harmoniously combined to stunning effect. It's quite a challenging composition as the eye is pulled about by all that there is to see. I love the fact that the reflected parts from the outside are as strongly geometric as those of the inside. The solid blacks help to establish an overall frame and the colour palette has a very modern office space feel. The silhouette of the figure descending the stairs is a striking contrast to all the surrounding geometry. It's a bit like a computer game image, but found on the street. Window reflections are of course a wonderful source of street pictures, and they often lead to quite complicated looking scenes. But this is an example, I think, where more empty space and few reflections can have a beneficial effect. Between 2009 and 2011, the Czechoslovakian-born photographer Martin Kolar worked on a series called Field Trip. It was part of a bigger project about Israel involving 12 internationally acclaimed photographers. He spent a year in the country photographing one of the most contentious geographical areas in history. Amongst his pictures of the country's life and landscapes comes this brilliant sort of still life shot that looks almost as if it could be a modern art painting. It really is quite beautiful. A wonderful collection of shapes and colours against the lighter shades of the road and buildings. I would have been very excited to have come across this scene. A perfect example of fine art street photography. This next picture is where a mundane or uninspiring scene calls for quick creative thinking. You know when you sometimes see a picture out of the blue and it makes a real impact on you, so much so that you have to keep going back to look at it again? Well, this next picture had this effect on me. It's also a great example of why you should never switch off and always be on the alert for that great street moment. Australian photographer Jesse Marlowe has a terrific sense of when a great picture is about to happen. This picture looks like it was all about getting into the right position so that the foreground and background worked well together. It's the sort of shot where it's so easy to get the framing wrong. I can imagine the photographer moving around quickly and trying shots in various places until he felt he got it right. It's the thrill of the chase when you come across something so transitory like this and you know you only have a very limited time in which to work. What satisfaction though when you nail it? <laughs> 
Alex Webb is so good at capturing groups of people in interesting ways, and he seems to have an instinct for the right moment. There are many examples of this throughout his career, but I've chosen one taken in Mexico in 2007. This picture almost reminds me of a tragic scene from a master painting of old, like a Goya or a Jericho. It's not quite the raft of the Medusa, but there is quite a bit going on. This is street photography at its most intriguing. There is a real story here, but it doesn't matter if we don't know what it is, because we are so drawn into this picture that the imagination will be on overtime trying to work it all out. The strange thing is, when I look at this picture, it almost feels like everything is happening in slow motion. The man trying to console the distraught woman, another woman hiding her face and another holding a cloth to her mouth, and then the man lying motionless on the ground, almost like he is sleeping through it all. Also, the colours here are not quite what you'd expect in a scene like this. The shades of blue seem to add a sense of calm, a sense of whatever is happening here, everything will turn out all right. This is what I like so much about street photography. When I see a picture, it often doesn't matter to me if I don't have all the information to describe what's going on. I like to feel involved up to the point where I need to use my imagination to finish the picture. How do we add that extra something to a picture to change it from a good street picture to a great one? There are times where we think we've found a good scene, but it just seems to lack that added ingredient to finish it off and give it that extra polish. Well, the Indian photographer Raghu Rai has used a very simple technique in this next picture to achieve that. India is one of the most photographed countries in the world and there is an ever-growing pool of talent there. In this shot, Raghu Rai captures this rickshaw man taking a nap, while the energy and vitality of his country carries on a pace in the background. The use of blurred motion by adopting a slow shutter speed and his close framing and proximity of the sleeping man accentuates this energy and reminds us of the world of daily life and the need to take a break. Genius. I did a recent video about how to shoot on a grey day when the light isn't so good and one of my tips was to shoot in black and white. Melissa Brayer has a fine portfolio that shows off her skill and creativity when using black and white to shoot the streets. Melissa says she used her iPhone to capture this tranquil scene when out jogging in Brooklyn in New York in 2013. Well, it's easier than jogging with an SLR, isn't it? I love the mysterious daydream feel to it and the smooth tones and strong contrast. It's a great example of contrasting tones in more subdued light and how to do black and white. And now for something completely different. I have followed the work of German street photographer Siegfried Hansen for a while now. He has the most extraordinary eye and impressive hit rate when it comes to delivering unusual street pictures. Much of his work is visually quite complex and often built around humorous or peculiar depictions of everyday street situations. This work is a good example of the graphic connections he makes between people and random objects. The shadows of the two figures at the bottom of the image appear somewhat grotesque by their poses and their difference in height to each other. This is added to by their contrast to the rigidity of the geometry in the rest of the image. Obviously the image has been flipped 180 degrees, which adds to the abstract nature of it and shows how a little creativity can go a long way. That's something to think about when considering scenes like this. Always try to push the boundaries of your creativity that little bit further to get more out of your pictures. Our next photographer knows all about that. Well, most of my regular viewers by now will be expecting a picture from Harry Dryard to pop up more often than not. And I'm certainly not going to disappoint when looking at pictures from the 21st century. Mr. Gryart has been photographing the streets since the 1960s, and the arrival of the new millennium has shown no signs of that abating. This picture, taken in Antwerp in Belgium in 2018, is my favourite picture from the book Between Worlds, which is a super collection that includes some of his later pictures. Every time I look at this image I get a buzz. The colours, the solid blacks, the lines, the shapes of the animated silhouetted figures and the framing all come together in a graphic and almost musical way. This picture is a brilliant example of shooting from the inside out, in this case from the inside of the shop out onto the street, and how to use the shop window and its contents as a contributing and creative part of the image. Just because you're going inside doesn't mean you can't still shoot the outside. We'll take a closer look at this another day. 
but right now we're going back out onto the street to look at framing. Another photographer whose work has gone from strength to strength in the last 20 years is Gustavo Minas. Born in Brazil, his portfolio is a rich tapestry of street work from around the world, including America, Europe, Central and South America. I found it very difficult to choose just one of his pictures, but decided on this image because it's the one that made me notice his work, and I was immediately captivated by it. All the geometry grabbed my attention first, the lines, shapes and repetition. I love the way he has framed it, and he used the woman's arm to extend the use of the diagonal lines. Her inclusion has also given extra depth and weight to the composition that helps balance the figure in the background, who appears in just the right position. The figure's bearing and triangular stride are again perfection. He carries the load, while the figure in the foreground is at ease. It's brilliant. I love night photography and I know how popular it is among street photographers. Being able to extend the day's shooting time by stepping out onto the streets on a winter's evening is one of the plus points of shooting in the urban environment. For Berlin photographer Martin Voltz, the dark hours are the key time to be photographing the streets and his pictures prove that the evening and night time offer just as much opportunity for great street pictures as the daylight hours and sometimes more. I chose this image because of its painterly feel and reference to the great artworks of the Renaissance and the technique of chiaroscuro, its strong contrast and use of deep variations and subtle gradations of light and shade. This picture was taken at a laser light show and there is nothing contextually remarkable about it, but it looks almost like a religious scene with the beam of light touching the hand and the faces looking up. There is certainly something divine or heavenly about it and it shows us how the relevance of the subject matter can often have no bearing on what makes a dramatic and striking picture. Well, on that note, I hope this sample of 10 pictures from the last couple of decades has shown you that street photography in the 21st century is going from strength to strength. There are clearly a lot of creative people out there who are continuing to take street photography forwards towards the next one. Let's just hope that AI doesn't interfere and spoil all that. Thanks for watching, love to hear your comments as always. If you want to help support the channel please subscribe and check out my book Fine Art Street Photography – How to Turn the Urban Environment into Dramatic Street Pictures. There are a lot of great videos coming up on the channel so see you next time.